thank you so much uh, for taking the time to join us here. Can you first start off by, tell, by introducing yourself? Okay. Well, my name is Malika Karim. I'm 21 years old. I'm a humanities student at the University of Pretoria, and I'm a very active youth advocate for UNICEF South Africa. Okay, wonderful. Now, you were one of the people who took part in the project, The Green Rising Through a Fresh Lens. Tell me a little bit about how you came to take part in this project. Well, I was invited by one of the lovely UNICEF representatives because they know I'm someone who's very active within the, the climate realm. And yeah, so she just asked if I would like to be a part of this project because it's got to do with climate action, which is where one of some, something I'm very passionate about. So, so where where does your climate activism come from? Um, and you know, and how are you involved in climate activism? Well, my climate activism actually came from high school. I remember I had a teacher talking about global warming, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, we need to do something about this. This is really serious because I mean, this is jeopardizing the future of the youth and the planet and all the animals." And my, I remember my classmates were like, oh, but Malika, this is only going to be a problem like the next 10 years. It's not something we should worry about right now. And I was a bit upset about that. And what I really like about UNICEF is that they like to bring out the youth's voice. And a lot of the times when I was younger, I felt like I wasn't listened to as much. So UNICEF really brought my voice to light. And I was able to, through UNICEF, convey my climate activism, such as through these photography projects. Okay. Yeah. Now, tell me a bit about the photographs that you took for the book. Talk me through them. Okay. So I actually didn't take these pictures. They were friends of mine that helped me take the pictures because I'm not, a, I'm not really a photographer, but I did direct everything. So I brought the props along and I positioned them and I was like, this is how I want you to look and things. So mainly, it was, it's very much conceptual because everyone else's uh, pictures are very much looking at it from a literal point of view. But because I'm looking at it from a point of view with regards to mental health, I had to take a different angle and I had to use props to try and convey a message. And it's very much, this is the beautiful thing about art, it's very much open to interpretation. So, yeah, I really wanted to have a piece that someone could look at and think about, stop and think about. It's not just kind of plain and simple so so yeah. but you're talking about um climate change climate justice uh climate activism as a men through through the lens of mental health where do, mm -hmm. how does that fit in well i was talking to a journalist earlier today and she was talk telling me about climate anxiety yeah climate action anxiety or climate anxiety climate Anxiety. I know it's got to do with anxiety with regards to climate action or climate change more so. And I felt that this is, well, when I was going through some research, when I first joined the, when I first entered the climate action realm, I felt all these emotions, like overwhelmed. I felt distressed because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, is there really no hope for our planet? And... The, these are the kind of emotions that I wanted to convey because this is the journey through climate activism. This is the, the experience that everyone will somehow come across if you decide that you want to be a climate activist and that you want to fight for, for your planet. So, so yeah, these are just some of the emotions that I experienced and I wanted other people to be able to relate to them as well, whether they've been affected by climate change in another way or whether they're just someone that's delving into the world of climate action and climate justice. So this is my main intention with regards to, to portraying how climate change affects our mental health. So what would you want the main takeaway for someone who's, who takes the book and, or comes to the uh, exhibition here and sees your photographs? What's the, what's the one thing you'd like them to take away from that? The one thing I'd like everyone to take away is that although these are our narratives, there's power to that and that just because it is our narrative does not mean that it is necessarily our fault. We need to understand that this is actually the, mainly the fault of big corporations, especially with regards to um, petrol, uh, large corporations involved with petrol or gas. Um, they tend to shift the blame onto the consumers, saying that, oh no, you need to worry about your carbon footprint. They love using this term, carbon footprint. But in reality, 
they are just shifting the blame. It is not the consumer's fault at all. With reg regardless of how much you try to reduce your carbon footprint, it will never amount to the amount. It will never amount to the the emissions that these large corporations emit out into the air and, and damage our environment. So these are the people who are truly responsible for climate change. It's not the consumers. So this is the main takeaway. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you so much for having me. Okay.